In this video, we're going to review some common types of factoring that you're going to be using um, throughout this course. The first type is the common term. So with common term, and this is usually the very first type of factoring that you would try to do anyway, you're looking to see what number or variable will divide into both or all of the terms in your expression. In this case, between a 3x squared and a 6x, I know that 3 will divide into both of those. So the number 3 will come out. We're taking a subtraction problem. And we're going to make it into a multiplication problem. They also have an x in common that I'll factor out. Now I'm going to make it into the multiplication problem. So I'm now thinking sort of the backwards distributive property here. 3x times what gives me 3x squared and that would be an x, 3x times 1x, 3x squared. And then 3x times what gives me negative 6x. So a positive 3 times a negative 2, and then times the x gives me back the negative 6x. So we factored it completely. We've made it into a multiplication problem, and there is no further factoring that you could do inside that parenthesis grouping. The second type of factoring that we'll take a look at is the difference or the subtraction of two squares. So it's got to be the subtraction of terms that you can take the square root of and come up with a whole number or a variable to a whole power. So for this one, x squared minus 25, there's nothing that they have in common. So I'm going to write down two sets of parentheses, and this is sort of the backwards FOIL method, if you remember that, first, outside, inside, last. Um, it's also distributive property twice that we're going to be kind of doing again backwards. So I'm looking to see what multiplies to give me x squared, or just an x times an x. And then what multiplies to give me negative 25, or think about take the square root of 25, which is 5. And then to multiply and get a negative number, one has to be positive and the other number has to be negative. It doesn't matter which one you put first uh, as negative or positive, just as long as the signs are opposites. Because if I were to FOIL this out as a check, I'm going to get x times x is x squared minus 5x plus 5x and then a positive 5 times a negative 5, negative 25. Notice my middle terms cancel out, and I'm left with x squared minus 25. For the next one, again, we're looking to see is there a common term that can be factored out or a number that will divide both into 49 and 36. In this case, no. It is the difference, and I notice that I can take the square root of 49 and 36 and the y squared and the x squared. So this is the difference of two squares. I write down my two sets of parentheses, and then what number times itself will give me 49y squared. That would be 7y times 7y. Negative 36, so the signs have to be opposites. And then 6x times 6x gives me the 36x squared. For this last one, notice that these are both divisible by a number, and that number happens to be 50. So I'm going to factor out the 50 first, see what I end up with. So if I factor out a 50 out of the first term, I'm left with x squared. If I take a 50 or divide 50 into the negative 200, I'm going to be left with negative 4. I factored, but I haven't factored completely because inside here is the difference of two squared terms. So I keep on going, bring down my 50, write down my two sets of parentheses. x times x gives me the x squared, opposite signs, and then 2 and negative 2. Notice at the start it wasn't the difference of two squares because the 50 uh, isn't a perfect square, and neither is 200. But once I factored out the 50, the result was the difference of two squares. 
It is worth noting that you cannot factor the sum of two squares. In other words, if this had been x squared plus 4, that's as far as I could go with it. I can't factor it any further. For trinomials, we again look for a common term to factor out. If there is none, then I'm going to go for the write down my two sets of parentheses and do a backwards FOIL or backwards distributive property twice on this. I look to the first term. How do I get x squared? x times x. I look at the last number and I think what two numbers multiply to give me negative 4 but then must add to give me the middle number of negative 3. Now I'm just looking at the number parts. I'm not worried about the x part here, just the numbers. So what multiplies to negative 4 but adds to negative 3? We'll see where the x comes in in just a second. So my numbers are going to be negative 4 times positive 1 and negative 4 plus 1 gives me the negative 3. So I put in my negative 4 and my plus 1 and I factored it. As a check I can FOIL this out. x times x, that's the first. Outside, x times 1. Inside, negative 4 times x. And then last, negative 4 times positive 1. When I combine these up, I have x squared minus 3x. Notice that's where my x is. And then the minus 4. So it does give me back the original. Let's try the next one here. I have a 1 in front of the x squared. Nothing to factor out of all three. So I'm going for my x times x. I look at the last number, what multiplies to 20, but has to add to the number 12. So this is where you first start with the multiplication, not the addition part, but the multiplication. What multiplies to 20? So you've got to go through and know your multiplication tables. So 2 will go into 20, so 2 times 10, and then 2 plus 10 happens to be 12. So I'm going to use a positive 2 and a positive 10. Now if I want, I can FOIL this out and check to make sure that I get this back to x squared plus 12x plus 20 like we did the check earlier. It's easier when the number in front is 1x squared. If it's not 1, then it becomes a little bit more of a challenge to figure out what the numbers are supposed to be. So if you already know how to factor and you're pretty good at it, then use your method. If not, I have this method that kind of shortcuts it a little bit, maybe makes it a little easier. If this number in front is not 1, what we're going to do is multiply the 2 and the 3 together. And I'm going to just bring down the x squared plus x and then multiply 2 times negative 3. Now I have a 1 in front of the x squared, so I'm going to go ahead and factor it like I did the other two above. So to get x squared, x times x, what multiplies to negative 6, but then has to add to a positive 1 in front of that x. So think about a 3 times a negative 2 combination here. Positive 3 plus a negative 2 gives me 1. 3 times negative 2 gives me negative 6. Plus 3 minus 2. If I were to FOIL this out, though, I'm not going to get back my original problem of 2x squared plus x minus 3. I mean, I can see right away x times x is x squared. It's not 2x squared. So here's where you've got to go back and fix it. You multiplied by 2 to get this started. You divide each of these by 2, each of these numbers by 2, reduce. 
So the 3 halves doesn't reduce, but the 2 over 2 does reduce. Still not multiplying back out though. x times x is not 2x squared. But if there's a denominator left over after you've reduced, you pull the denominator up in front of the x. So 2x plus 3 times x minus 1 is factored. Now if I check this, 2x times x, 2x squared, 2x times negative 1, 3 times x, 3 times negative 1. Add up the middle terms, and I do get now back my original problem. But if you get rid of that 2 by multiplying, you have to remember to divide it back into the problem. Otherwise, it doesn't work out. So let's try it with this next one here. 6x squared plus 5x minus 4. I see I have the number 6 in front, so I'm going to multiply. And I write this out just to remind myself that I'm going to have to divide. I'm going to multiply the 6 and the 4 together, so I'm going to bring down the x squared plus 5x minus 24. I factor it. Keeping in mind, I'm going to have to remember to divide here at some point. I need to multiply to negative 24, but add to a positive 5. So this is where you go through your, again, multiplication tables. I'm going to go 8 times negative 3, 8 plus negative 3, and put those in, 8 and negative 3. I multiplied by 6, so I have to divide by 6, reduce my fractions down, reduce them all the way, so that's going to reduce down to 1 half, and then if there's a denominator left over, the denominator goes up in front of the x. So it factors into 3x plus 4. 4 and a 2x minus 1. And again, you can FOIL it out, double check, but you got to come back to this original problem. Now sometimes on exams, they'll give you that uh, question like this. They'll say, given 6x plus 5x, or 6x squared plus 5x minus 4, uh, one of the factors is, and then they'll give you some choices. So rather than factor it out completely so that all you have to do is FOIL it and check it, they'll just give you one of the factors and say, okay, is that it? Is this it? Is this it? Or is this it? And then you can actually only get plus one half there. You can go through and see now you have to factor it. And then one of the factors happens to be, and the answer here would be the 3x plus 4. That's one of the factors of 6x squared plus 5x minus 4.